Let's pray together. Father, what we desire to do this morning is of the utmost and eternal importance. And I am confident that what we are striving to do has all the temptations and fights and struggles of the world and the flesh and the devil attached to it from the youngest of ages And here this morning, I know to the oldest of ages, there is such a war within our hearts for the authority structures you have placed over us. We are fallen men and women, boys and girls, who bear the marks of that fall and that sin in the way we respond to those you have entrusted to lead and to guide us. And so I pray for the boys and the girls, the teenage young men and young women, the young adults still living in homes, their parents this morning, how I pray that you would give them tender hearts to receive your word, that they would delight in obedience to your commands, that they would find sincere joy in doing exactly what you promise will give them the greatest amount of of blessing, and the promise of good. And I pray that you'd help me to communicate in a way where the youngest of us can understand, and yet it's interesting and helpful for the oldest amongst us as well. And we ask all these things because Christ is our Savior and is transforming us even as we speak. For this we are grateful. Amen. Take your Bible with me, if you would, and let's go together to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. We are in the smack dab middle of our series on family matters. We have addressed what it means to walk in the Spirit of God in order to be able to fulfill these household commands or these household codes so that a wife can walk in joyful submission to her husband. A husband can lovingly lead in a selfless and sacrificial way. But when we come to Ephesians chapter 6, we find in verse 1 that it's very interesting, children are addressed. Now within the modern American culture, I think if we're not careful, children can oftentimes feel ignored, they can feel neglected, or even seen as unimportant. That can even be displayed in the phrase we talk about with children or use regarding children in our own Christian homes. We want you to be seen but not heard. If you consider that, though I understand the motivation and the intention of it, that certainly is not the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 19 and verse 14, at the behest of his disciples who are saying, keep all the children back, interrupts them and says, no, 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 suffer the children to come to me. Do not forbid the children from coming to me because my kingdom is comprised of these children. In fact, when Paul wrote the letter to the church at Ephesus, he addressed all of the congregation. And as we just mentioned, he addressed husbands in their role and wives in their role. He's going to address those who work within the home and the responsibility of their role. But he actually takes time understanding that this letter is going to be read in the corporate gathering, when all of the church is assembled together to address children specifically. And he wants their attention when he tells them that they are to obey their parents in the Lord because it's right. That they are to honor their mother and their father because it is a good and right thing to do and that it is a command from God that comes with promise. And so listen very carefully, boys and girls, the youngest amongst us, and yes, teenagers and young adults still living at home as well. What we say to you this morning is, as a church, we love you. We are thankful for you. And we rejoice that God has brought you and the rest of your family to this church. We care deeply for you. 
And hopefully the proof of that is that we have skilled junior church and Sunday school teachers and a Wednesday night program and vacation Bible school and that we pay Pastor Nate to just simply care for your family and look after you as well as your parents, discipling and caring and serving them, providing activities and all different types of things to say, we're for you, we love you, and we delight that you're here. But we, we, we need to understand this morning that God gives very clear and very specific instructions, not only for adults, but also for children in how we are to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The goal is clear. In Psalm 144, the psalmist says, our sons may be as plants that are grown up in their youth, and our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the likeness or the manner of a palace. I know that poetic language perhaps doesn't make sense initially, but when he's talking about a son being a strong and vital plant, or a young woman growing up and being as a beautiful and polished stone, the point is to demonstrate that as we rear and as we train and disciple, as we instruct children, the end result should be one who walks faithfully and strongly, vitally and faithfully with God. And so children, this is a place for you. If you're not careful, I think some of you will recognize that when you come to church, this is what mom and dad do, and you're just here for this hour or these couple of hours because mom and dad say this is what we do as a family, and you have friends here, and you're able to talk about fun things here, and so you don't mind going to church. But I want you to understand that church is for you. And I want you to see it in three questions this morning. I want you to see from the Bible, who are the children that God is speaking to through Paul writing? Then I want you to see what he commands them to do, and then I want you to see why he commands them to do it. Who are you, what does he command you to do, and why does he command you to do it? So notice with me chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, who is it that God is speaking to? Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. As I've already said, when Paul wrote this letter, he had every expectation, every thought that what he wrote would be read aloud. But what's very important to recognize is that God doesn't just speak about children. This is why you're so important. God doesn't just speak about you, teenagers. He speaks to you. And when he speaks to you, it's not just in Ephesians chapter 6 when he says, children, obey your parents, honor mom and dad. He does this throughout all of Scripture. In Exodus chapter 20, in verse 12, the, the fifth commandment of the first ten commandments God gives to his people, he says to children directly, Honor your mother and father, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God gives thee. Or even as Pastor Allen read for us, he gave children this wonderful book called Proverbs, which is an instruction from a father to a son. And constantly as you read Proverbs, which if you're old enough to read, you should be reading every single day. Even if it's five verses, if it's ten verses, there's 31 chapters. So maybe you can read a whole chapter every day. But as you're reading it, it's God's instruction to you so that you can be wise. So you can know and do and love what God says. And so many teenagers and young adults have no clue what God desires for them. And they're constantly fawning to grasp at it or guess at it when all the while God has given you clear instruction. I mean, listen to some of the Proverbs, directly speaking to children. Chapter 1 and verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of your father, and forsake not the law of your mother. Or as Pastor Allen read in Proverbs 3, my son, forget not my law. Let your heart keep my commandments. Do not let mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. It's like talking about like a necklace that's always around you. Know what is true and know what is right. Obey what I'm saying. Or in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20, very similar to what we just read in Ephesians 6. Children, 
Obey your parents in all things. This is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Again, God doesn't just speak about you and what your parents want you to do. He speaks to you, and he tells you what you're to do. So I guess we need to define who children are. Because in our culture, when we use the term children, we use it to mean someone who's normally younger in age. If you're a child, it's typically someone who's upper elementary and down. So like a sixth grader could still be considered a child, though they don't necessarily like to be called one. Certainly no one older than that would like to be called a child. But this word in Ephesians 6 and verse 1 is rather nondescript. What I mean by that is it's not all that clear that it's only talking about one age or a different age. Rather, there seems to be a general consensus. A lot of people getting together and agreeing that the word children in Ephesians 6 and verse 1 is talking about a child who's old enough to understand things. Like what I'm saying right now. You hear me and you understand and you can figure out what's going on in church. And yet someone who is still dependent on mom and dad. That is, they're still underneath mom and dad's roof or they're still receiving some help from mom and dad because they're under their authority. What we're going to learn this morning is that the more dependent you are on your parents, that is, they're the ones who are providing for all your needs, food, clothing, bed, bedroom, all of that. The more dependent you are upon them, the more clearly God calls you to obey them. They're the ones who pay for your food, for your sports, for your musical instruments, for your dentistry bills, for your cell phone, for your car insurance. So as you're dependent on mom and dad, your command from God is to obey them. But we're also going to learn that as you grow less dependent upon your parents, you will notice the scriptures calls you less to obey mom and dad and more to honor them. And so we're going to have to learn this morning, what does it mean to honor and what does it mean to obey? And I'd like to do that right now. Because who is he speaking to? Someone who's old enough to understand me and someone who's still dependent on mom and dad. And 20-somethings, that could very much be you just as much as your six-year-old brother or sister. That said, if this is who he's speaking to, what does God command you to do? In verse number one, he says, children, obey your parents. When God created the world, and the Bible says he spoke it into an existence, and whoosh, nothing became something amazing. It pleased God in creating the world that he created it in such a way where people are always in authority or under authority. Like if you go to a fast food restaurant, you'll notice someone's in charge and he or she is telling everybody else what to do. In the home, we've been learning that for your mom and your dad, your dad is to be head over the home, but not bossing around and being mean to everyone, but he is the one who as head of the home is to love and to lead so that you and your brother and sister and your mom can have a spiritual environment to grow and become more like Jesus. Pastors, our heads, or are responsible to shepherd the church. It's my responsibility and the other pastors here to look after you and your parents and to care for you and to make sure that what's taught here is right and holy. And parents, let me just say, it is so good for you to hear me saying all these things so that you can then reinforce them to your children over and over and tell your grandchildren these truths. But the Bible teaches very clearly that God has, a, has designed authority and that it's his plan that we as his people submit. But in verse number one, he commands children specifically to obey. What does it mean to obey? I love Ted Tripp's book, Instructing a Child's Heart. I think you should read it. In there, he says, obedience is submission to God's authority that causes a child to do what he, is set, what he is commanded to do without arguing, without stalling, without making excuses, or without challenging his or her parents. 
So what does it mean when God says, children, obey parents? What does it mean for a, t- a teenager or a child to obey? It means to do what mom and dad say without arguing, without stalling, without making an excuse, or without challenging their authority. What are some things that parents call children to do? Perhaps if you're younger, brush your teeth. If you're hearing me and mom and dad tell you, brush your teeth, God's will for you is to stop whatever you're doing and go brush your teeth. And that's for some of you teenagers as well, all right? Be nice to your siblings. No, you can't go to that party that everyone else is going to. Before you go outside, you have to finish your homework and chores. You can't go play. No, you can't go to the movies with your friends because you didn't do whatever it is. When your parents give you the command and it doesn't directly violate what God says, without an excuse, without stalling and try and drag it out, without making some grandiose reason or arguing or challenging them, you simply do what you're told. How serious is God about this? Does God really care if a young boy or a young girl actually obeys? Listen to this list. In Romans chapter 1, verse 29, Listen, if you would. Being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, those who invent evil things. If you're younger, you don't even know what all of that is, but you know all of it sounds bad. Do you know what the next thing on the list is? Disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, and unmerciful. God is serious, boys and girls. God is serious, teenager. God is serious, young adult, that you obey your parents. You don't understand my parents. You don't understand, Pastor Matt, it's 2017. Like, nobody just does what their parents tell them to do. Nobody just says, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, or no, sir, or no, ma'am, or just says, okay, I'll handle that right now. It's expected that there's going to be a little bit of easiness to mom giving me a command and me saying, after the next level, or wait, I'm just trying to finish up this conversation with my friend on the phone. You need to listen to me very carefully doesn't matter what you think is best, and it doesn't matter what you think is right. The scripture is clear. Your responsibility as a child is to obey your parents. God could not be more clear on that. Parents, if I could, let me give you just a brief warning as well as a quick exhortation. When it comes, here's the warning, when it comes to your older children, I don't ever want to minimize the fact that what I just said is true. They are to obey you. But I'm confident that we can tempt our children in wrong ways. Uh, And we can do it by unwisely insisting or proudly or harshly insisting on their obedience and our authority. Treating them as if they were still five, six, seven, eight, and nine years of age. The older our children get, the more we need to teach them that as they are to obey us, They are more naturally and importantly to honor us and to prefer to listen to our wisdom. The danger, of course, is if as parents we continue to treat them in very young and immature ways, we do not teach them how to appropriately learn responsibility and make decisions on their own. We do not teach them how to appeal in submissive ways so that they can learn that they do have a voice and they can interact with us and it's not simply just I speak, you do. And so let me warn you, do not as a parent simply hear, that's right, children obey, so that means I tell them whatever I want to tell them and they better just get up and do it. In the same way, the husband is not to abuse his leadership or his headship in the home to simply pursue or serve his own purposes. God help the parent who thinks the reason their child exists is to serve their base needs. Your responsibility as a parent is to learn your child and help them understand 
what it means to faithfully follow Christ. So there's a warning. But let me then come right on the other side of that and give you an exhortation. Parents, in a culture where children tend to rule the home, you have to develop a godly sense of backbone. It is through your wise and loving authority that you are given by God the ability to joyfully and lovingly teach your child what it means to submit to God's authority over their life. If you cannot insist on your child's immediate obedience to you from a young age, please hear me on this. How in the world are they ever going to learn that when God says something in his word, they better submit to it because he's serious? If they don't see you being serious, and you're the one who stands in place of God as the delegated authority over them, why would they ever think God is serious? So my exhortation to you is this. Take obedience in your home seriously. Do it lovingly. Do it kindly. Do it with prayerfulness. But don't for a moment think that your three-year-old cutely disobeying you while he wiggles around the room is somehow going to be cool when he's 17. Because it's not. And so early on, learn, insist, and plead and pray for your child's obedience. Listen to a pastor of days gone by, the name of J.C. Ryle in his book, Duties of Parents, and how well he puts this. Children cannot learn too soon that this is a world in which not everyone was intended to rule, that we are never in our right place until we know how to obey those who are over us. Teach your children to obey while they are young, or else they will be protesting against God all their lives and wear themselves out with a vain idea of being independent of his control. That's brilliantly said. Teach them young what it means to obey so that they do not for a second think they can get away with something and wear themselves out seeking to disobey God throughout the rest of their life. Children, what is it that God commands you to do whether you are young or see yourself as a teenager or young adult? You are to obey. But secondly, the word is, in verse number two, Honor. Children, I don't know if you've thought about this or not, but there, there is an expiration date to your obedience over uh, to your parents. The obedience you must give to them is for a limited season. I have my parents sitting in this worship service. They can tell me what to do today, and I can very well do it. But if I do, it's not because I now have to obey my parents. I have my own home, my own wife, and my own four children. I'm no longer commanded by God to obey them. That season for you, believe it or not, it feels like eternity. It, trust me, it feels like that for them too. <laughs> Maybe more so than you recognize. That's not going to be that long. But where the obedience is a limited season of your life, it's not going to be forever, Honoring your parents is the privilege and responsibility God gives you until they die. And so let me explain to you what it means to honor your parents. Since there's coming a day where your parents are no longer going to tell you what to do, they're no longer going to say, hey, pick up after the dog, or make sure you put your socks in the hamper, or do your homework, you probably should learn now what it means to honor them. To honor is more than to simply obey. Because you can obey outwardly while on the inside in your heart, you don't want to do anything of what your parents say. Think for a younger child. Uh, you can say, mom says to you, hey, I want you to pause the TV. I want you to stop Netflix for a minute and go take out the trash. And you can say, pause the TV. And with a bad heart that doesn't want to do it, you can get up and you can go do what mom says. But there's a difference between obeying and honoring. And I want you to see what that looks like. To, the word honor in the Bible implies to love and to regard highly. It means to show respect. 
The actual word means to think of it as heavy or weighty. It means this, that you care so much about what mom and dad think or you care so much about what mom and dad say that you think it holds a lot of weight. You think it matters a big deal. And the way you prove that is the fact that you don't just obey them, but you show them honor. Let me walk you through what honor would look like at various stages. Imagine that elementary student again. It would be obedient, perhaps, to just get up without complaining, without stalling, without making an excuse, grab the trash, and take it out, and put it in the trash can. That would be obedience. And young man, child, that's what you're called to do. But what would it look like to honor before he runs back and sits down and hits the play button again so he can be back into his own little world. It's, hey mom, is there anything else I can do? Is there anything else I need, that you need? It's the teenager who looks to their parents and says, hey, I'd like to go to this, this game or this movie or this party tomorrow night because a bunch of my friends are going. And Mom and dad jump on their little app and they notice the reviews of the movie and they go, oh, I gotta be honest, sorry, I love you, you can't go to this movie. And so you submit as one who is in obedience to your parents and you say, fine, but the next day at school, teenager, you start slandering and speaking ill and whining about how your parents treat you unfairly. You may have obeyed them, you certainly have not honored them. And what it means to honor in that scenario, and teenagers, listen to me very carefully, is that you would recognize that God in his kindness to you has given you parents who love you and are so concerned for your soul, so concerned for your purity that they would actually say no, knowing that, they're, that them knowing that you're not gonna like it and you're probably gonna be upset, but they care that much about you. They're more concerned with whether or not you're pure and holy than whether or not you're liking them in the moment. What it means to honor them is when you go to school the next day and everyone's like, why didn't you come to the movie with us? Instead of throwing mom or throwing dad under the bus, you go, because my mom and dad looked at the reviews and thought it wouldn't be best for me and I know that they only want what's best for me. Now I'll admit to you, that might not make you the coolest kid in class, but it makes you biblically wise. It makes you a child who understands obedience and honor and that's what God calls of you. Or it's the college age student who maybe you're down at Pensacola or Bob Jones or over at Boyce or you're here in town at U of L or UK or wherever it is. And you end up having a little bit of a fun semester and you don't do so well in your grades and your finances are looking rather poor because you've just blown through it and you're learning things. And maybe mom and dad aren't even the ones who are helping you pay for college. You're doing it on your own. But they got the report card or you told them what it is or they saw your bank statement. And you know what happens? They go, hey, listen, we're concerned. We love you. We think you need to put some structures in that will help you with discipline so that you actually study the way you're supposed to study, so that you actually have a budget and don't blow through the rest of your money. And instead of going, who do they think they are? I'm not under the roof anymore. They're not paying for my room and board. They're not the ones paying for my classes. Because what mom and dad say matters to you, because it has weight to you, because you desire to honor them as mom and dad, you listen. You heed their advice. Now this is gonna need another caveat. Listen to me very carefully, parents. Don't for a moment, in arrogance, insist upon your child's honoring of you. If you have the entirety of their growing up years, show nothing but a hypocritical lifestyle that in the home abuses and abdicates your responsibility to truly train and instruct them or that you have just been demanding and forceful over them without a culture of love in your home. Children, you are still to honor your parents because God commands you that. But parents, don't for a moment assume that you just should be treated like royalty when you have treated them so poorly. Get in your minds. The reason we joke about the jars in my house with the marbles is because I recognize, not always, but the fact that I have children who are growing up way too fast. I don't have much time with them left. You may think 10 years is a long time. It's not. 
And I've been given by God, along with my wife, Selah, this massive responsibility to train and to guide, to instruct them in the ways of holiness. And that ain't no joke. And it's not something that you and I should take such liberty over as to think that there are more important things than the pursuit of holiness. So if there's something in your family that prevents you from being able to do that, get rid of it. Whatever it is, whatever entertainment, whatever hobby, whatever enjoyment thing there is, but it prevents you from being in a position where you can instruct your children to obey and one day honor, get rid of it and find the joy of holiness. Children, you are commanded to obey. You are commanded to honor. And the difference between obedience and honor can be summed up like this for you younger ones, and this will help you. Obedience to mom and dad is you saying, I have to do what they tell me. I have to do it. That's true. That's right. Honor, I want to do what they tell me to do. I delight and want to do what mom and dad say. If you do it, you're obeying them. If it's in your heart that says, I want to do it because I know mom and dad love me and I know they want what's best for me, now you're understanding honor. May God bring us a culture here in our church filled with families whose deep conviction is that they will train their children to both obey and to honor them. Why should we do this? Let's finish, okay? Look at verse number one through three again. Who are we speaking to? We're speaking to children who are as old enough to understand until they are still dependent upon mom and dad in their home. It spans that age. What does he command them to do? Obey and honor. Why should you do it? It's going to be the answer of verse number three, but let's read verses one and two along with it again. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That, that is always a purpose word. It means here's the reason why. You do the obeying and you do the honoring so that it may be well with thee and that you may live long on the earth. I don't know if you read a lot of commentaries. and I'm not speaking to the children now, I'm speaking to the parents. Oh, children, you can, certainly. But John Stott has a tremendous one on Ephesians, and he gives three reasons why children should obey and honor their parents. I think they're worth giving to you. They won't take long. Number one, <coughs> common sense. There are certain things that we don't have to explain very difficultly in our culture. We don't have to explain that a mom should care for her child. It's just innate. It doesn't matter what your religious or cultural background. Everyone understands it is a mom who comes along and after bearing for the child wants to care for her. Second nature. Just is understood. Another one of these realities, it's just common sense, is that children... When they obey their parents, this is good. And when they disobey their parents, it is bad. All cultures and all religions affirm this. So children, why should you obey and honor? Because it's just obvious you should do that. It's called common sense. But notice the second reason. Because it's God's law. As good as common sense is, God doesn't leave us just to go on our common sense. He doesn't leave us to simply guess at it. Here in verses 2 and 3, he says it is the first commandment he gives with a promise. In the Old Testament, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. In the Old Testament, God constantly gave commands to his people. And there was the promise of blessing if they did what he said. And there's the promise of punishment or a curse if they disobeyed. In the New Testament, after Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he doesn't yield for us the curse because Jesus took the curse for us. He appeals to you as a young man. He appeals to you as a college-aged woman still underneath her parents' authority based on the promise of God. Everyone wants things to go well. God tells you how. He says that you do well, that things go better when you obey and when you honor your parents. And when you rebel, 
the entirety of your family and the entirety oftentimes of even the church community will suffer. The entirety of the church feels the weight and prayerfully weeps with your mom and your dad when you turn your back and disobey and in dishonoring them and rebel against God and his church. The same way the entire community rejoices when they see a young man go from first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, graduating high school, and the entirety of his days, he is obedient to his mom, and he honors his father and shows great deference, great love, great appreciation for those whom God has given him. Parents, grandparents, this is what we should be fighting for. Those who are older in our church, this is what we're supposed to be working toward, helping the younger generations to see. Why should we obey and honor? It's common sense. God promises life goes better as part of his law. But number three, and this is the most compelling reason, because of the gospel. Because of the gospel. It is Jesus alone who gives a child power to obey and honor his parents. Look at verse number one and answer this question. You're going to have to think with me for just a moment. Children, obey your parents. The next three words are crucial. In the Lord. That phrase, in the Lord, does that refer back to children or does that refer back to parents? Because it has to refer back to something. Which of the two does it refer back to? If you say it refers to parents, then the instruction of verse number one is simple. Children are only to obey their parents in so much as their parents are in the Lord. They only have to obey their parents if they're Christians. Does that seem like that would be what Paul is advocating? Only obey your parents if they're actually believers. That doesn't seem consistent with what we know from the rest of Scripture. So the in the Lord, I would take then to mean, refers back to children. So children are to obey their parents as those who are children in the Lord. That means they should obey their parents as part of their obedience to God. And since God is the one who determines what is right and what is wrong, when I disobey my parents, I actually disobey and dishonor God. I'm not just disobeying mom. When she says, hey, I need you to help with the laundry, and I whine, I fuss, and I say I don't want to, it's not just mom I'm disobeying. I'm disobeying God because God is the one who's giving me my mom. When dad says, hey, I need you to help clean out the garage tonight before I get home so that I can actually park the car in it for the first time since, I don't know, 2004, all right? When he says that, and you go, I don't want to do that. And so you don't get around to it. It's not just dad you're disobeying. You're disobeying and dishonoring God. But here's what's fascinating. And I hope from the youngest to the oldest of us, I can speak these next few sentences in a way that makes sense, and then I'll be done. The phrase, in the Lord, means, child, you are a Christian. God has opened your eyes so that you see your need of a Savior. And having seen your need of a Savior, you have repented. You've turned from your sins and you have trusted in Jesus as your only hope. And he has saved your soul. That means the Holy Spirit of God is in you. You are now in the Lord. This is why you can actually obey and honor your parents. Something that you've tried and tried and tried to do on your own and never been able to do. Sometimes I wake up and I just don't want to obey Pastor Matt. I just don't want to do what mom and dad tell me to do. Sometimes what my mom says just grates on my nerves. Sometimes I feel like dad, all he wants to do is make my life miserable. I don't want to help him. And all of this self-effort where you try and obey and honor mom and honor and obey dad and sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't go so well, you can actually obey and honor your parents because the Spirit of God is in you if you're a Christian. And this is what that means. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead you to want to do things that are holy. 
He's going to want you to do things that show God both honor and obedience. So if the Spirit of God's in you and mom says, hey, I need your help making dinner, the Holy Spirit is going to war, fight, scream inside of you, don't you make an excuse. Don't you try and have a bad attitude. And that flesh, that flesh is going to go, I don't want to do it. I don't want, I'm enjoying sitting on the couch. I'm enjoying playing with Legos. I'm enjoying talking with my friend. I'm enjoying looking at Facebook. Whatever it is. But the good news is, you can actually obey and honor every time because the Spirit of God's in you. You don't have to dishonor your parents. You don't have to disobey. But if you're here today, young boy, young man, young girl, young woman, and you want to obey your parents and you want to honor your parents, but you can't, maybe one of the greatest reasons why you just can't is you're not a Christian and you should talk to your mommy and daddy about that this afternoon. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't, don't wait. I'm 15 years old. Talk to your parents. Talk to one of us as a pastor. But God commands you to obey and honor. And if he's commanded you to do it, the good news is you can. Let's pray together. Father, move the children of this church who are genuine believers from have to to want to. And help us as parents to not settle for the fact that our children simply obey. Let us love and serve and give to where they delight and find great joy in showing us honor, where they actually want to do as we have said. Father, we're in need of your grace. We can't do this on our own but we know we must do it. And so I'm thankful that your spirit is at work in those who are your children, empowering and providing and strengthening them to do as you've commanded. And how I pray that you would, from third graders all the way up to 20-somethings, convince them this morning that the role you have given them as long as they are underneath their parents' authority, is one of obedience and honor. And how I pray for parents this morning, that they might see that inverted relationship, that as the child gets older, the obedience would go down while the honor would go up. And that they wouldn't be demanding obedience of their 18-year-old the same they would be demanding when he was one. That they would have won his heart over and instructed him in how to honor so that the same result ultimately is accomplished. And so God, do a work in our church and in our homes which certainly only you can accomplish. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.